Good morning, and welcome to worship at the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm Amy Pop, and I serve this congregation as its credentialed religious educator. We welcome you to our service this morning. Whether it's your first time in a worship with us or your hundredth time, we hope that you'll find here ideas and questions that stretch you and liberal values that challenge you to join us in loving boldly, living justly, and welcoming all to the table. In this moment, we also honor the people of the Peoria Nation who lived, learned, and loved on this land long ago. Reverend Derek Jackson is our guest minister today. The Reverend Darren Jackson is the Director of Ministries for Lifelong Learning of UU Ministers Association and an affiliated community minister with Second Unitarian Church of Chicago. He is one of the authors in the book, Centering, Navigating Race, Authenticity, and Power in Ministry. Derek is active in DRUM, the UU Ministry for People of Color, and he is also the treasurer for Healing Moments, a ministry for caregivers of people with Alzheimer's. In his free time, Derek likes to knit and be involved in theater. He's married to James Olson, a United Church of Christ minister, and lives with their two cats, Merlin and Morgana. If you're new to this congregation, I invite you to help us get to know you. At the end of this service will be the link for our coffee hour on Zoom. All are invited to the conversation. Please send a note to the church office for more information. This congregation continues to be sustained by the care, talents, and generous gifts of our members and friends. If you'd like to make a financial gift, see the link in the chat or the slide at the end of the service. Lastly, I would like to extend a special invitation to all who are watching to attend the live streamed installation service for our own Reverend Jennifer Innes at 3 p.m. this afternoon with an on-site walk-through reception at the UU Church after the service. Now, with open minds and loving hearts, let us enter into worship. Hey everybody, come sing a song with me. Here's our note. La, come, come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me that I might know your mind. And I in the winter time come dream a dream with me come dream a dream with me come dream a dream with me that I might know your mind and I'll bring you home when hope is hard to find and I Winter time, a rose in the wind. 
Our opening words are The River Call by Reverend Manish Mishra Marzetti. Between rocking the boat and sitting down, between stirring things up and peaceably going along, we find ourselves here in community, each called from many different journeys, many different life paths onto this river road. Some are here because the rocking of the boat has been too much, too much tumult, too much uncertainty, too much pain. Some are here with questions about where the boat is going, how best to steer it, where the journey ends. Others are here as lovers of the journey, lovers of life itself. Here, in front, beside, behind, each a passenger, each a captain, doing the best we can. Rest here, in your boat, with me, the river calls. Listen to how I flow, the sound of life Forcing all around you. Let the current hold you. Let the current guide you. The river that gently flows through your soul whispers. Home. Let us worship. We will light our chalice this morning with these words by Eric Walker Wickstrom. In a UU sanctuary, people sing together. When we light our chalice, everyone focuses on the flame. Yet, it is the paraffin of the candle, the cotton of the wick, the potassium chloride and sulfur of the match, and the oxygen in the air around us that makes that flame possible. As leaders, we are not called to be a lone beacon on the hill. Rather, we are meant to work together so that we might together shine. Good morning. Today we are going to be exploring how we might go about creating a future together. Now, I believe that virtually anything is possible and it can be wonderful. So today I wanna to share a story with you about being open to all of the possibilities of the future. It's called The Artist. One bright sunny day, two pieces of paper were sunbathing, enjoying the bright sunshine. One piece of paper was called Snow White. She was pure white and very proud of her perfection. Her friend was called Pure as the Dawn. She too was amazingly white and unstained. They had always been that way. Suddenly in the distance, they saw a figure. As they watched, he approached ever closer until he was only a few yards away from the two paper friends. In his arms, he carried a palette and paintbrushes. In his eyes, there was a curious dream-like light. In his heart, he carried the dream of possibilities. What do you think he wants? Snow White asked Pyrrha's Dawn. You don't think he's gonna paint on us, do you? Pure as Dawn flinched as the words sank in. I think that's exactly what he wants to do. Well, there's no way I'm gonna let him paint on me. No painter is gonna change me. I want to stay exactly the way I am, said Snow White. But what if he's a master painter, said Pure as the Dawn. 
What if he creates a masterpiece on our pure white emptiness? What if he makes us masterpieces? But what if he makes a complete mess of me? Said Snow White. No, I'm not taking any risks like that. I'm going to stay just as I am until the day I die. And so it came to be that the artist approached the two pieces of paper and asked to paint his dream of possibilities upon their pure whiteness. Snow White told him no way, and she remained pure white and exactly the same until the day that the wind and the weather finally turned her back into paper pulp. Pure as Dawn took a risk and said, do as you wish with me. I trust in the possibilities. And the artist turned her into a masterpiece, a unique and beautiful combination of the dream he'd been carrying in his heart and the pure whiteness of her possibilities. So that in many years to come, Many people would look at that picture and in its depths and its beauty, they would see their own possibilities. There are always unlimited possibilities in our lives. We are constantly faced with the choice of whether to stay the same or to take risks and be open to the possibility that we could become even more fully the masterpieces that we already are. So my question to each of you and to our church community is simple. In this moment in our history, are we willing to take a risk and trust in the possibilities to change into something more? I think we are. So may it be. From Abraham Herschel, prayer cannot bring water to parched fields or mend a broken bridge or rebuild a ruined city, but prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, and rebuild a weakened will. On our time of worship, we share the joys and sorrows of the congregation and then of the world. First, we begin with a great joy. Today, this congregation installs its new minister, Reverend Jennifer Innes. This service includes the commitment made between minister and congregation as we start our new work together. May we offer our love and encouragement for this celebration and the future of this congregation. Next, we turn to care and concern. We offer our concern and support to Connie Henderson and her family as grandchildren Natalie and Daniel face health challenges. Let us keep before us all of the joys, sorrows, names, and milestones that live in our hearts. We add them to our circle of care. We turn to the sorrow of our larger world. Yet again, a white man took the lives of women and people of color. On March 16, a man killed eight people and wounded another in Atlanta, Georgia. The Asian and Asian American communities are reeling from these murders amid the rise of race-based violence over the past year. Yet again, a man tried to erase women from life. We pray for the safety of our Asian and Asian American members and friends. We pray for the safety of all people of Asian origin. We pray for the safety of all women. We each have an active role to play and our choices make a difference. May we live out the value we place on the inherent 
worth, and dignity of every person and how we are all connected. May we work toward the release from the layers of oppression that bind us. May we strive for the freedom and the fullness of life that comes when we are liberated from bias. May we all be safe. A reading this morning is Rules of Improvisation by Tina Fey. The first rule of improvisation is agree. Always agree and say yes. When you're improvising, this means you are required to agree with whatever your partner has created. So if you are improvising and I say, freeze, I have a gun. And you say, that's not a gun, it's your finger. You're pointing your finger at me. Our improvised scene has ground to a halt. But if I say, freeze, I have a gun. And you say, the gun I gave you for Christmas? Then we have started a scene because we have agreed that my finger is in fact a Christmas gun. Obviously, in real life, you're not always going to agree with everyone says. But the rule of agreement reminds you to respect what your partner has created and to at least start from an open-minded place. Start with a yes and see where that takes you. As an improviser, I always find it jarring when I meet someone in real life whose first answer is no. No, we can't do that. No, that's not in the budget. No, I will not hold your hand for a dollar. What kind of way is that to live? The second rule of improvisation is not only to say yes, but yes and. You are supposed to agree and then add something of your own. If I start a scene with, I can't believe it's so hot in here. And you just say, yeah. We're kind of at a standstill. But if I say, I can't believe it's so hot in here. And you say, what did you expect? We're in hell. Or if I say, I can't believe it's so hot in here. And you say, yes, that can't be good for the whack figures. Or you say, I told you we shouldn't have crawled into this dog's mouth. Now we're getting somewhere. To me, yes and means don't be afraid to contribute. It's your responsibility to contribute. Always make sure you're adding something to the discussion. Your initiations are worthwhile. Spirit says dance, spirit says dance, spirit says dance, spirit says dance. 
It is so great to be with you um, this morning on this special day, the day that you get to install your minister. It was an honor to be able to be with you this morning um, all the way from Chicago. And I wish the best for your continued ministry with Reverend Jennifer. This is such a special time. You see, installing a minister is about recognizing that relationship between a congregation and a minister and beginning on a path, a journey to see what might happen, what your combined ministry will look like. And the sky's the limit. You have no idea what is going to happen in the next few weeks, days, months. But it is an opportunity to explore, to create. In fact, it is... Really, you're asking yourselves to engage in an act of improv. Now, I know some people, when they hear improv, get really nervous. We often think of improv as the TV show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? The series of comedy and quick wit. But improv is really about being present in the moment and taking the, whatever comes and engaging with it in meaningful ways. And it's something that we do all the time. We don't never know what's going to happen. And if we didn't know that before, I think this past year has taught us just how much of improv we have to do. And so as you begin this journey together, I invite you to think of your ministry as improv and to use some of the rules of improv to help you guide your ministry together. The improv is not just a, a sense of random experiences. It is not just responding in a vacuum. Improv has a framework, a form to work within. Kind of like we have a covenant 
together, to work with each other. And so we start from our grounding and we start from our covenant. We have a framework that will hold us as we engage in our ministry. And if we follow some simple guidance, it can really influence and impact our ministries in ways that allow for more possibilities, more health, more excitement. So the first rule of improv is to come from a place of yes. And we heard this in the reading as Tina Fey talks about respect what your partner has created. It asks us to take a moment and pay attention to what the person we are engaging with or the people we are engaging with and their ideas and listen to them and understand that this is their reality, this is their understanding, and just start by accepting their starting place and then figuring out how do we move from there. If we start from a place of yes, then we can start different ways. We can see a path that might not be present before, that might be confusing. But it's not always what people are conditioned to do. Uh, in Improv Impresario, Keith Johnstone writes that there are people who prefer to say yes, and there are people who prefer to say no. Those who say yes are rewarded by the adventures they have. And those who say no are rewarded by the safety they attain. There are far more no-sayers than yes-sayers. But you can train one type to behave like the other. And that's part of what improv is, is helping train no-sayers to be yes-sayers. To be able to start in a place of just accepting what is, where we are, and moving forward. You know, a good example of yes sayers and no sayers is in our sacred story. You know, Snow White was a no sayer. She did not want uh, anything to the artist at all to touch the canvas. She wanted to stay the pure white, and that was it. While Pierre as Dawn was a yes-sayer and was willing to embrace the possibilities that the artist could create with her. But Snow White did not want it to be messy, did not want it to, you know, not look good. And so by the safety of being able to stay in the beauty that she wanted that she believed in, while pure as Dawn was, was excited about the adventure of what the artist could do. And so many times we are in this space where we have the opportunity to try something, do something, to say yes to an opportunity, or just to acknowledge where people are. And that is where our ministry starts, by that acceptance. In that beginning. But it's not just with yes. And uh, another rule of improv is that you say yes and. What that means is that, that you need to contribute. You need to be part of the story. So it's not just to say, yes, I see where you are. It's Yes, and here's where I am, and how can we move this together? How can we take the next part of the story? How can we imagine what our ministry will look like? 
This is about collaboration, working together to create the scene and create the ministry. Now, as Tina Fey writes, if I start a scene with, I can't believe it's so hot in here, and you just say, yeah, we're kind of in a standstill. But if you actually start to give some responses, like, you know, we're in health, or it can't be good for the wax figures, or crawling into a dog's mouth, those all start to shape where we are and what we're doing and creates the beginning of a story and a journey. And so it's so important to collaborate in ministry, to build off of each other's ideas and thoughts and dreams, to create together, co-create oh, the ministry of the congregation. It is not just the work of the minister or the congregation. You are to say yes to each other and yes and and keep building and building to see what might be, what is possible. Now we can live into our UU values and make them real in the world. Now, the, this next rule of improv is, goes right with collaboration. It's really important. And it's one of my favorite ones, actually. It's make your scene partner look good. So in this, I, an idea of this is that when you're doing improv, it's not just about how uh, you can come off with uh, the best lines or the respond the best. It's how you support the other person is important. So if you are both making each other look good and supporting each other, then things would be really interesting and it might be funny or it might be deeply serious. But a meaningful scene will happen because we wouldn't let someone uh, go off in an in a odd way and uh, kind of spin themselves in a hole, we would help them. We would support them. We wouldn't ask something of them that we know they cannot do. And so this rule, for me, reminds me to ask, how can I bring out the best in the other person? How do we work together bringing out our best qualities and supporting and nurturing those best pieces? And also it's those areas where we need to grow to help us grow within those growing edges to be better human beings in this world. We work together to support each other in this journey. This is, for me, the, our universal side of our faith. The part that recognizes that we are held in love. And that love wants the best for us. And in that love, we even also want to be the best, to do the best, to bring out the best in ourselves and others that we meet. It's this idea that you know, we do not have to do anything to be saved because we are whole as we are. So we work to bring that wholeness out of each other and we move and engage out of that place of love and wholeness. So we start with yes, and then move to yes and, and then we make our scene partner look good. 
And then finally, we have to be willing to fail. And this is, even though it's the last one I'm mentioning, it might even be the first one you think about. That we, that it is okay to fail. And the hope is to fail forward. What I mean by that is that when we make mistakes, we take them as opportunities for learning and continuing moving and trying again. And we keep growing from the mistakes. We don't continually repeat the mistakes because we haven't learned from them, but that they are opportunities for us to grow, opportunities for us to learn. And we embrace that. And then we hold that learning, that growth opportunity as important and essential. And it means then that we are willing to risk, to try things that we may not have done before because we are not afraid to fail. When I teach improv classes, one of my favorite exercises is called I Failed. And in this exercise, I invite everyone to say, I failed with as much as enthusiasm as they can muster. Oh, failed. Imagine if we brought that into our lives, that failure is not something that brings shame and grief, but joy and excitement. And how then it can not become an end at the beginning of a new way of being, a new idea, a, a, a new understanding of ourselves. And so, starting with yes, and, and then making our scene partner look good, all the while being willing to fail forward. Are they keys to healthy ministry. It invites us to engage in this process and in this relationship in a way that is deep and collaborative, that creates opportunities for new things to emerge, to find new things to love each other deeply and bring out the best in everyone in the congregation and anyone who is touched by this congregation, by the ministry that this congregation has. So I invite you to ground your ministry together in improv and see where it takes you. I can imagine that you can do wonderful things. Blessed be. times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Let a dancing song be heard. Play the music, say the words, and fill the sky with sailing birds. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance.
Through the good times and the bad times too Let it be a dance Everybody turn and spin Let your body learn to bend And like a willow with a wind Let it be a dance Let it be a dance Let it be a dance friends as we go forth from this time together may we draw upon an improv spirit starting from a place of yes contributing when we can bringing out the best of everyone we meet and failing forward to growth and learning blessed be